Welcome back into First Take. Mel Kuyper Jr. It's that time of year. You know I love it. Has released his mock draft 2.0 with Caleb Williams remaining as the number one overall pick to Chicago. Followed by two more quarterbacks in Jaden Daniels to Washington. Drake May to New England. Kuyper has those three as the only quarterbacks taken in his top ten. Now here's Bears GM polls on the comparisons between Caleb Williams and Patrick Mahomes. There's pieces that are similar. Uh, obviously, the one that stands out to everyone is just different arm angles. Um, that's a unique trait. Not a lot of guys um, can do that. Uh, I give Jeff King, um, who's on my team, credit. He, he painted a picture of, you know, there's two types of quarterbacks. There's artists and then there's surgeons. Um, so within that group, you can kind of see who's the artist create, that's really creative, um, doesn't draw within the lines where there's more of surgeons who are, you know, like your typical, like the Brady's and Peyton's. So um, you kind of branch them out on those buckets and go from there. So that's where they're, they're similar. Oh, look who it is. The man, the myth, the legend himself, Mel Kuyper Jr. Mel, do you know that one of my favorite events ever is the NFL draft? I don't know when we call that a sport, but I just love it. Really? It's so fun. Yes, I absolutely love it. I feel that way about the first round. Yeah. The first round is great. It's a shit Sir, after that. Stephen A. You know, Sir, I'm, ready, I'm ready to go back and watch Mel Kuyper on TV. Stephen, when I host, do you feel like more surgeon or artist when, you know, I'm conducting the show here next to you? It depends on which segment. I actually am both. Oh. I just feel like, you know, I'm... I'm it's, it's oh, just, I was I'm asking about me. I didn't know. Oh, you? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mel, um, big shoes to fill here, this comparison. What traits about Caleb Williams remind you of Patrick Mahomes? That's major. First of all, I hate these comps. They create unrealistic expectations. Patrick Mahomes, nobody knew Patrick Mahomes was going to be that great when he came out. Mitchell Trubisky went ahead of him. So all this notion about Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, they were all hated on when they came into the draft. And now they're great and everybody wants comps to them. Uh, forget the comps. Uh, uh, you can get back Caleb. I watched him play high school football at Gonzaga. He can make plays when everything breaks down. He can do some unbelievable things on the football field. But I think when you look at Caleb going into the NFL, the Mahomes comparisons are going to think immediately he's going to be a rookie that's going to star in this league, and that's not going to happen right away. But I think the Chicago Bears have to say, do we get a haul in return, or do we just get an offer that's just okay? Unless you get a haul, you have to take Caleb Williams number one overall. All right. Um, now let's break down Daniels and May. Is it close with the next two QBs where Washington will have a decision to make? Or in your eyes, is the LSU quarterback infinitely better than May from North Carolina? I think right now, Christopher, it's, it's Jaden Daniels, number two overall to the Washington Commanders. I think what he did this year in terms of the balancing act, people say, well, you got to be aggressive. When you're aggressive, do you make mistakes? He was aggressive. And he didn't make mistakes. He didn't fumble the ball when he was running. He didn't throw interceptions. He played against great defenses. And Nick Saban over the last two years, and he lit that Alabama defense up two years in a row. And he took his game this year to a completely different level, same as Joe Burrow did at LSU. He was good his first year, not great. He was great the second year. Same thing with Jaden. So while Jaden comes in with all that momentum, right, perfect for today's NFL, he draws comps to Lamar Jackson. Herm Edwards says he's Randall Cunningham. I'll take both, right? Drake May did not have great momentum down the stretch. He had three games that left you kind of scratching your head. He had a really good 2022, lost his coordinator, lost his top receiver. Excuses you can't make for a college quarterback. Some of the layups, the easy throws, he wasn't accurate and precise with. That's why Jaden Daniels is a second quarterback and Drake May goes three overall. You know, Mel, I want to throw this question about you because I'm just curious because when I think about the greatness of C.J. Stroud and what we've been seeing from him in Houston last season and then I see how Bryce Young struggled or whatever, you know, I remember standing next to Bryce Young right before the Super Bowl in Arizona and looking at how small he was. I want you to dissect for me. I'm thinking about a Jaden Daniels. He's a bit taller. He's listed like at 6'3", 180 plus, but a Caleb Williams is listed like 6'1", but nearly 220 pounds. I want to know how much should that factor into the equation when we're looking at quarterbacks, considering how much we see size factor into the equation on the NFL level. I think once Russell Wilson did what he did, Stephen A., I don't think it mattered anymore. I think what Bryce Young will do possibly, and people are going to beat him up for this year, he got beat up. He would sack more than anybody else. And guess what? For his size, the one great positive for Bryce Young, he came out of the year 
healthy. He, and he didn't get injured. Will Levis got beat up and then missed the game. You think about, you know, Bryce Young, protect him, get some better receivers, and then we can evaluate Bryce Young. It's still to be determined what kind of quarterback he will be. Stroud went to a team that had the infrastructure. And he bottled that Georgia game. We said, could he bottle that game and take it into the NFL? He did. But I think in terms of where we are right now with Jaden Daniels, he's put weight on, okay? But he's still kind of the splendid splinter. And he is in that 6'3", 6'4", range. I, you know, to me, is he 205? He's going to be around that range. That's what Bryce Young, Young was, a manufactured 206. What's he play at? Probably 190, 195. So for Jaden, I don't think it matters what he does on the football field speaks volumes. And he did it against SEC teams. He did it running. He did it throwing. And he did it consistently week in and week out. When his defense couldn't stop anybody, and he had to take his team down the field and bring them back in the third, fourth quarter again, the second yeah. half, he did that. So for Jade, there's, there's no, there was no hiccups. There was no red flags. There was no, well, this game bothers me. This quarter, there was none of that. That's why he goes two, I believe, and Drake May goes three. Of one I just thought of. You got nine offensive linemen here in the first round picked. I, th I think I counted right. Nine. So it's a good offensive line draft. The Jets need three offensive linemen. They just cut Tomlinson there the other day. And they're at 10. And you have the Jets drafting Bowers, the tight end, the, the humongous person who's great from Georgia. Are you saying the Jets draft Bowers because they have to? He's so good? Or you're saying that the offensive lineman that the Jets really like is going to be drafted like a Joe All from Notre Dame before them so they can't get him? Jets, no offensive line at 10. That's Explain. The that's the thing. I'm with you. They need offensive line help, multiple. But I think when you, you can't force it, and the Brock Bowers for Aaron Rodgers would be special. You say, well, he's a tight end. He's not. He's a receiving entity. He's not a tight end. He's an H-back, fullback, wide receiver, slot. He can do anything. You can move him around, and he is going to be a receiving entity. They need it opposite Garrett Wilson to help out Garrett Wilson, right? So you think about the O-line. If a J.C. Latham, I have him going five to the Chargers. I have Joe Alt going seven to Tennessee, who could not protect Will Levis at all. It was Ole block after Ole block, and Will Levis held up really well. Now, I thought a really good rookie year and shows promise moving forward to the point where he's their quarterback. So I think for the Jets, if the right guy's there, yeah. If, if a, if a Alt or a Latham slides down there, Olu at Penn State is in the mix, certainly. But I think Bowers, I've had five and 1.0. Roman comes in as the coordinator. You go away from Bowers at five, right? So that gets Bowers down to that 9-10 spot, the Chicago or the Jets. I think he's too good to pass up. I think Brock Bowers for that offense for Aaron Rodgers overrides the offensive line, which you can help in free agency, and you have other draft picks beyond the first round. Mo Kuyper, it's you, so I, I, I'm, not, I'm not fearful of, of – be asking you any question because you can answer anything when it comes to football. I'm going to put you on the spot here. You got Caleb Williams going number one. It's one thing to sit up there and project that the Chicago Bears are going to move on from Justin Fields and draft him number one, which is what your mock draft is suggesting. I want to know, is that something you believe should happen, number one? Should they draft Caleb Williams as opposed to keeping Justin Fields. And if Justin Fields were to move on, where does Mel Kuyper Jr., based on his football analysis of what he's seen from Justin Fields, believe is the perfect landing spot for Fields in the event that he's gone from Chicago? Yeah, a lot to unpack there, Steve. I'll be quick on this. I've, I've said all along, if it's a push situation, you draft Caleb, you reset the clock, and you trade Justin Fields. If they feel that, hey, we're good with Justin Fields, and we get a haul in return. So it's not push anymore. It's a haul. Then you could think seriously about keeping Justin and trading that number one pick. Unless it's that bonanza of a trade, I think you reset the clock. I like Justin Fields. I had him the second highest rated quarterback when he came out. He had a lot of detractors. He's shown well. He can maybe be in that tier after Patrick Mahomes, right? He can be. So can Caleb. I think there's a chance that both these quarterbacks are in that second tier which means a team that trades, and you said, who could? I'm Atlanta all the way. Grew up there, went to Georgia before Ohio State. Atlanta has nothing. They need a Justin Fields. If you put Justin Fields in that division in the NFC, look out. They have players around them. They've been drafting weapons all along from Drake London to Pitts to Bijan. Are you kidding me? Now you go get Justin Fields for a two and a four? That's all it's going to take? Uh, yeah, you got to pay him, but hey, it's worth it if he's really good. You got to pay all these quarterbacks if they're good. You expect them to be good if you make that trade. So if I'm Atlanta and the Bears are willing to make that deal and they go away from, from Justin Fields and want to trade him and they take Caleb, I'm trading Justin Fields. I'm in the Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. I'm making that deal today for a second and fourth round. I was pick. hoping you said Pittsburgh.
But that's a story for another day. All right, yeah. Well, I was hoping we were going to talk about the New York Giants and what's happening with us, so Why? good for you. Why? Um, <laughs> thanks, Mel. We'll be Take talking to you a lot.